Assassin's Creed Revelations, the third installment in the Ezio Auditore saga, due out in November, we were dispatched to a central London location on a quest to interrogate mission design director Falco Poika about five brand new things in his game. Ezio, where is your hook blade? My hook blade? Well, the hook blade is uh, one of our major new features in Assassin's Creed Revelations and uh, when we introduce a new feature we try to make it usable for all aspects of the game so for navigation, for uh, climbing, uh, for jumping so you can jump further, you can climb faster, you can use it on the zip lines as you saw in the preview um, and, uh, and then you can also use it in fights. God, it's in it's just a, an extension of the hidden blade, so the hidden blade works just like it does before, but now it's got a hook at the end so you can use it for other, other you know, parts of the game. <laughs> you jump uh, slightly further so uh, your reach is like a bit, bit further and, uh, and then also uh, if you're falling or whatever you can, you can reach a bit further in order to catch yourself. Has that let you um, change how you design the cities because there is that slightly bit more reach? For sure. Um, actually, uh, you know, Galata, which is the first district that you're in, uh, has to be designed for both because you start out the game and you don't have the hook blade and you can actually, if you want to, you can wander around the whole city. So we had to design that one for, for both kinds of climbing. But yes, you know, all the distances take into account the extra reach, you know, so the streets could be a bit wider. Uh, we had a little more leeway. Um, but we, don't, uh, we didn't make the buildings taller because that doesn't make sense for the city. Uh, it's just some of the elements would be spaced differently, I guess. My brothers in Roma would like this. Just give credit where it is due. So we have, uh, you have three ingredients, three different types of ingredients, sorry. Uh, so one is the shell, which is the casing actually. Uh, so you have like impact, uh, tripwire, uh, fuse and, uh, oh, and then the sticky. Uh, so the sticky one is actually one that you haven't seen yet. It's uh, any kind of bomb, you throw it onto uh, an individual and then uh, he'll walk into a crowd or whatever and then it explodes on him. So it's kind of a cool little variation. Uh, then you have the explosive and the explosive uh, determines just the radius and the strength of the explosion. In terms of the effects, uh, we, have, we have the um, the gold bomb which will you know spray fake gold all over the place and cause all the crowds to come and you know have a bit of a mad panic attack trying to get all the money and so that's a great way to distract people and to cover your tracks um, and then we have actually I think I saw you use a caltrops um, so when you're running away from the the baddies you can throw a, a caltrop bomb on the ground and then it, it'll stop them dead in their tracks so those are just a couple of the the variations we also have a stink bomb that one's kind of funny you know, you throw it, if it, if it hits one individual, all the people around him will kind of back away and go, you know, these smells, right? And so it's a great way to isolate a character. If you want to just assassinate one person and he's protected by guards, you throw a stink bomb on him, everybody gets out of the way, and then you can either use another bomb on him or you can run up and you take him out and uh, you're not, in, you know, no one's in the way. Push through! Push through! Stop! 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 You know, we, we would put these uh, towers in the game and they were called, they're called dens. And so they're either den, uh, assassin dens or templar dens. So the Borgia Tower gameplay is when you attack uh, the dens uh, to take them over and make them into assassin dens. Um, it's exactly like the Borgia Tower gameplay in, uh, in Brotherhood, though it's in an urban environment, so it's a bit tighter, a bit more kind of paranoid, I guess. Um, but then once you have these towers, periodically you can get attacked by Byzantines trying to take them back. This is when you would activate uh, our Assassin Den defense uh, gameplay, um, which is the, t the tower uh, defense gameplay that you saw. The idea is uh, you're in command of this defense. Uh, you're directing all the, all the assassins. They're getting, they're getting placed on the roofs and they've got crossbows or guns. You can use a cannon to take out the enemies that are heading towards the den. Um, and uh, it's just kind of like urban street fighting in a sense, uh, uh, just, you know, in the past. The secret society, the Byzantines, um, you know, infiltrating into the city, trying to take over the city sur surreptitiously. Being aware of you and being aware of, like, assassins being the Templar's arch enemy, 
they want to get rid of you because you're, you know, this super godlike master assassin. Um, so the stalkers are, you know, are basically people that are stalking you and when they find you in the city, they'll come up, they'll sneak up behind you and stab you in the back and you lose a huge chunk of your life and then they run away and you can either chase them down or you can ignore them, it's up to you. Uh, and then if you're, once you get good at the game, the people who have played, you know, 10, 20 hours, when they get hit by a stalker, they're going to be able to press the right button and turn around and take the guy out right away. You have the standard uh, recruits, which is just a guy being held at sword point. And, uh, and then what we've done is we've added a bunch of uh, new recruit missions, which uh, actually have a backstory and have, you know, a proper mission for you to do. So it's a side mission, just like any other side mission. but. The, the reward is that you have a new assassin and then you know something about him and you know why he, he joined the ranks. When your assassins reach level 10, um, you, in order for him to reach level 10, you do a special mission with him uh, or her um, where you face an opponent which is one of our uh, Templars from the multiplayer, character, uh, from the multiplayer game. You do the mission with this historical character, with the assassin. Uh, he reaches level 10. And then when they get to level 15, in order to get to level 15, you have to do another mission. And again, it has the same character in it. So I guess you, you could apply from that that maybe the, the first one is, is less successful because the, the, the Templar does survive, so. We plan to dress as entertainers and walk right in. I will find the disguise and meet you there. Uh, I always thought uh, the minstrel was, was pretty funny in Brotherhood and in, uh, in Assassin's Creed 2, but he was very annoying and so I thought it would be fun to turn things around and have a mission where, where Ezio is a, is a minstrel and uh, for whatever reason and so, you know, I won't e explain, you know, what the setup is and all that stuff, but uh, you actually have a mission where, where you're disguised as a, as a minstrel and so you get to turn the tables on, on everybody else and annoy everybody else with your music. Young Cesare, I heard him say, could not be killed by man. Thank you for coming. So I you played beautifully. Thank you.